the key to this is to respect yourself and know yourself and be able to sit with your emotions. Hello, welcome. We are talking about how to stop oversharing, how to stop embarrassing yourself, how to stop saying things because you're looking for some kind of validation and then regretting the fact that you told this person these things. This stuff has been said and now you can't take it back. We're talking about how to stop doing that. It's not a nice feeling. There are a few ways that we can get past that. I have certainly found less of a need to over explain myself and it's through doing the stuff we're gonna talk about in this video. The first thing is to work out why you keep over explaining yourself, why you keep oversharing. And this, for me at least, is two different things. One, I am looking to validate the way I feel, or two, I am hoping that the relationship will grow, say, I share something with someone who's not quite a friend yet. I'm hoping that if I share something, that maybe that will bring us closer together. I want to be careful talking about this kind of stuff because oversharing can also be a trauma response. So that's something that you need to bear in mind and work on separately. But if we're just talking about generally how to stop oversharing, I've both been through stuff that has required me to do some work on that and now it's not so bad, but it's also the stuff we're going to talk about here. So in terms of validating yourself, I've done a few videos about this on my channel because it's such an important topic and it's something that I've really worked on over the past year and a half and I've seen a big difference. The key to this is to respect yourself and know yourself and be able to sit with your emotions because say something bad happens, for whatever reason, you feel like you need to talk to someone about this. And there are definitely instances where you do need to talk things through and talking things through is helpful and it's what you need to do. Like don't keep things bottled up. But we're talking about oversharing where you regret sharing something. So this isn't to say, don't ever go to anyone and don't tell anyone your problems. No, I have so many people who I can go to and talk to because I'm in recovery and it's really important for me to keep reaching out, but I never feel like I'm oversharing in those situations. And I think one of the reasons why, this is already getting really confused. I feel like I've got so many threads going on in this video already, but I hope you're bearing with me here. One of the reasons why is because I've defined my relationship with that person. So I'm not gonna feel like I'm oversharing and they're not gonna feel like I'm oversharing. It's not gonna be awkward, it's not gonna be weird. I'm not gonna be embarrassed or regret what I've said because the relationship is clearly defined. So at the beginning I talked about why you're oversharing. One thing could be validating yourself. Another thing could be what is that friendship? What is that relationship? What are you trying to do through oversharing? Are you hoping that this person can give you good advice? Are you treating them as a sounding board when they haven't agreed to that or they, they don't think that that's what your relationship is? So about validating yourself, you need to sit with your feelings. And when I said you need to respect yourself, it's so that you don't feel the need to get someone else to acknowledge what you feel. Like you respect yourself enough to be like, I can deal with this. I can address this. I can sit with myself through this. I don't have to run straight away to tell someone else or to get someone else's feedback, to get someone else's opinion, to share this, to rid myself of the way that I'm feeling. It's important to sit with your feelings because then you can work out what is for me and what can I share? Because again, depending on the kind of relationship or the kind of friendship we're thinking of, there are some things that I would share with my friends in recovery, for example, that I would never share with people who aren't in recovery because it's not appropriate and it might actually scare the people who aren't in recovery because they don't understand what that means. Whereas there's just a shared language that I have with people in recovery that if I say something, they know what it means and it doesn't necessarily sound like what it means. It's hard to talk about this without giving examples. But for example, if I said something like, oh, I've, I've had drinking thoughts over a year and a half sober now, and so drinking thoughts for me, they're not every day like they were at the beginning. But see, even me talking about it, I can make assumptions about what other people who aren't in recovery might think about that. And it's not to do with this means I'm gonna relapse or this means that I want to start drinking again. That is something that people in recovery will react to very differently to people who aren't. So you have to be aware of what's going on first and who is the right person to share that with because then you're not gonna feel like you're oversharing. You're gonna be like, oh, I can talk about this with this person, whether that person is your sibling or someone in recovery or a school friend who you're really close to or a friend from uni or someone at work. Like there are different people and you probably already do this. There are different people who are well suited to dealing with different kinds of problems or different things that you're struggling with. But the only way you can assess who is the right person to talk to this about is if you sit with yourself first, validate yourself first and think, yeah, this is hard. You're going through this right now. You're struggling with this, this happened, it's not ideal. Sit with that and it will be uncomfortable, but it's not scary and you'll realize that you can deal with it by yourself. You don't need to instantly run to someone else, end up oversharing and then thinking, oh, I made a big deal of that or I regret telling this person that. Once you've sat with yourself and validated whatever it is that's happening and you're thinking, okay, yeah, you're struggling with this, this happened and it's rubbish. You have processed it a bit 
and then you can take it to someone else and be like, hey, I'm dealing with this. I think another thing that helps me here is with oversharing, remember that it's making you feel better in the moment, but it's not making you feel better long term. If you have a tendency to overshare and you are very familiar with this feeling of, oh my gosh, why did I say that? It's helping you in the moment maybe, but that's because you're bypassing that step of sitting with yourself, sitting with what you're feeling and just letting yourself feel angry, letting yourself cry, letting yourself feel sad or disappointed or annoyed. These are not nice things to feel, but you need to give yourself space to feel them. And while you might be rushing to someone else to explain or to share something and then you're gonna regret it, the reason you're regretting it is because you didn't give yourself that time to deal with it first and again I think there are certain situations where you do need to go straight to someone else and talk to them about it like you don't need to get stuck in your head someone said to me today don't go into your mind without supervision <laughs> things can get out of proportion when you're just thinking them to yourself but I think hopefully you will know the difference between a thought like that which needs immediate help and you need to be like hey I'm thinking this I'm struggling or a thought that's just like oh I'm feeling uncomfortable because someone so said this and I want to talk about it there is a difference there and Yes, sometimes it, you need to talk to someone straight away about something, but a lot of the time it helps first to sit with what you're feeling. And again, this is if you have a tendency to overshare. Hopefully you can understand like the different contexts where you might immediately want to go tell someone something good or bad. And then other times where you need to hold back and just process it yourself first. So remember that it's helping you feel better in the moment to overshare, but it's not helping you long term. And it's also probably not helping your relationship or your friendship with this person because they might then feel like you're dumping your emotions on them. They might feel like they're on a sounding board and they don't want to be, or that's not the stage your friendship is at yet. It will completely depend on the specific person who you feel like you're oversharing with or the specific situations that you're in that you're oversharing with. But remember that you can't really bypass this thing of sitting with yourself. It's gonna be not nice, but it can also be a healing thing and a really peaceful thing if you lean into it. I think something else that comes into play here, which I have talked about on my channel, is to stop trying to get everyone to understand you. Stop trying to explain everything and have to go into your whole life story or the whole backstory of why something happened or why you acted this way, why you said something. One, people don't care that much. They only care about the way it impacts them. Let me give an example because this can all be very like nebulous. The other day I was supposed to have a phone call with someone to chat about something, just a friend. I called them and they didn't pick up and then they text me being like, sorry, something came up. Can we reschedule for later this day? As it happened, I was busy later that day. We couldn't reschedule and I felt really bad about that. <laughs> I had this desire to overshare, but I just said, no worries, let's speak on Monday. And we did, we had a lovely call this morning instead of the call we were supposed to have on Friday. I was planning on sending them this schedule I'd made of my day on Friday to be like, look, I scheduled in our call and you couldn't make it. And so look, like I wasn't avoiding you. I said Monday because Friday was such a busy day for me and I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But I refrained from sending a photo of my schedule because I'm like, they don't care. We can reschedule and also what we're gonna talk about in terms of having a better way of communicating or better relationships it is so much better to sort out this kind of thing. When you're speaking to someone, we had our phone call this morning and I said, look, I'm so sorry I couldn't do it. Like I know we agreed a time. They couldn't make the time. They said, should we do a later time? Normally it would have been fine, but it wasn't today. I'm sorry. And I explained it over the phone and there was no animosity. There was no being annoyed. It was just like, sure, like it didn't work. We're speaking now, it's fine. There was no drama to it. It wasn't a big deal but things over text can get really passive aggressive. <laughs> Maybe this is just me. It's so easy to misread tone when it's something written down. If you're approaching it in a particular mood, say you're feeling more generous, you might read something and be like, oh, it's a shame we can't talk, but whatever. Whereas if you're reading it and you're feeling annoyed, you're gonna read that same message, those exact same words and be like, how dare this person? Like, oh, my time is so important. Why do they think that they can rearrange this, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> you can slip into that ego mind really quickly. So talking face to face or over the phone, whatever it is, but actual speech, not just text, voice notes the same. Voice notes are like an interesting bridge because you can end up oversharing in a voice note, but it also is more like a conversation because you're actually talking, it's not like written speech, so it can be helpful. But like we're gonna talk about, that comes with defining your friendship because some people are like, yes, send me a voice note or they send you voice notes and then that's like an established thing that you do. And other people are like, I don't have time to listen to your five minute voice note. Like, why are you sending me this? <laughs> so we're gonna talk about <laughs> defining 
relationships. Make sure you have really clearly defined what your friendship, what your relationship is. This is why I find it so helpful to have friends like I was talking about in recovery because I know that things aren't a big deal with these people. If I call them because I want to talk something through and they don't pick up, I don't take it personally. I know that they will call me back when they're free to talk about things. It's just a far more easygoing kind of friendship than other friendships. And I never feel like I'm oversharing because we are very much on the same page. So if I share something about my recovery or about my addiction, then they will share something to help me see how they dealt with it, how they dealt with what I'm going through or to show that they know what it's like too. So if you can find people who are on the same wavelength as you and who maybe have some of the same experiences or the same interests like just because you grew up being friends with someone or just because you have certain family members that doesn't mean that you need to share things with these people and this might seem obvious but if you are continually sharing stuff with someone and you feel regret afterwards you feel embarrassed and you feel like you're oversharing even if that person is your sibling or your cousin or your friend that you grew up with if you feel like <laughs> you are sharing too much with them or you're feeling bad because you shared something and you're not getting either reaction you wanted or the validation or the comfort or the advice whatever you were looking for from this person stop going to this person because maybe at one point they were someone you could go to and get good advice from but maybe things have changed that's difficult to accept as well because we like to have things at least i like to have things stay the same and be like well established and be like this is how it is but that's not what life is like. <laughs> but if you can define what your friendship is or what you expect from someone, that will help you stop oversharing because you will stop expecting something from someone who is not going to be able to help you with that. And again, this is hard if it's like a family member who you would have thought that would give you really good advice or that would be there for you, would want to hear things. But if someone is using that stuff that you shared against you or the next day you're feeling, why did I share that with them? You feel like you're oversharing and it's always happening with a specific person. You need to address that and deal with the fact that maybe this was before someone you could go to and would be there for you, but maybe they're not anymore. And you need to accept that. And it goes back to the self-validation that we talked about. If your relationship has shifted and you no longer can go to this person for good advice or you feel like you're oversharing and you feel bad about the things that you've shared, you need to sit with yourself and I guess grieve the loss of that once safe connection. You once had this person who was there for you, who could help you, who was interested and wanted to give you good advice or who was a good sounding board and that was something that you had established in your relationship. If that person is not gonna be there for you in that way anymore, you need to sit with that and be sad about it and let yourself be sad about it before you go on to find someone else who will be able to help you and who is interested in being your friend or your sounding board. Because otherwise, if you don't have that person anymore and you don't sit with it, you're just gonna end up oversharing with another person because you're not actually dealt with how you feel. And you're then just gonna put that onto someone else. It's really hard. <laughs> But I don't want to say it's really hard because it is a really rewarding process. You get this sense of peace within yourself because you're like, I trust myself, I respect myself, I have very clear boundaries, I know who I can share certain things with, I have some people who support me, I have some people who I know that I can't go to them with their, for advice anymore, but that's okay because things change and our relationship isn't like that anymore. I know that I can validate myself. You just start to have these really deep roots within yourself that you don't really need to necessarily go to someone else when something bad happens straight away. You know that you can sit with the bad feelings and that's why it gets easier the more you do this because you then are not scared of the fact that you're feeling sad or angry or out of control or everything feels like hectic and a mess and you don't need to rush to tell someone or overshare about or over explain about something because you're not scared of sitting with that feeling, you're not scared of that uncertainty, you're not scared of that sadness anymore. You can think, I need to sit with this sadness. I need to let myself feel this. I need to let myself sit in my pajamas all day if that's what's gonna take. I need to let myself cry or I need to let myself get angry. Maybe go for a run and try and get some of this anger out. Journaling is really helpful. I talk about it so much because it's so helpful. Open a blank word document and just write everything you're feeling. You will have these healthy coping mechanisms and these ways of dealing with things that mean that you don't have to overshare with anyone, you don't have to regret sharing something. And you're not gonna be scared of having to deal with things yourself because the more you do this, the easier it gets because you're building trust with yourself all the time. Every time that you choose to, instead of going and talking about something before you've even processed it and then oversharing and regretting it, 
Instead of doing that, every time you choose to slow down and sit with yourself and sit with what's happening and label it, write about it, cry about it, whatever like emotional release process you need to go through, every time you do that, you're building trust with yourself so that you're not going to overshare in the future because it's like investing in yourself every time. And when you start to view situations like that, things that are difficult to deal with, when you start to view them as those kinds of opportunities to grow in your relationship and your trust with yourself, then you're not scared of the sadness either or of the anger or of being disappointed or annoyed because you can learn from that experience and use it to validate yourself and learn how to get better at all of this stuff because I know it can be challenging. I know <laughs> because I've been dealing with it. There is a lot of really quiet power in doing this. You're not gonna then feel the need to overshare. You're not gonna feel the need to over explain. Not everyone is gonna understand why you do things, why you say certain things, why you care about things. You don't need to over explain that. If they don't get it, you don't need to spend time and energy trying to convince them this is why you care or why they should care. You can just state your cause or state your thing very clearly and be like, this is what I do or no, nope, can't make that. Sorry about this, but it's not gonna work out. Their reaction is not your responsibility. You just worry about what you're doing. You don't have to overshare or over explain what you're doing. I would say as well, it can be quite helpful to reframe the idea of oversharing something. So I have been posting videos on this channel for nearly a year now and I've shared quite a lot. But I would say I don't share anything until I've processed it myself. So I think that is something to bear in mind. And in terms of reframing oversharing, people talk about online like embracing the cringe. So maybe if you are feeling regret after sharing something, yes, all of the stuff we've talked about so far, but also just be like, does it matter? Can I reframe this? Can I say, oh, I'm a really enthusiastic person or I'm really earnest, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm not oversharing or I am oversharing and this is just part of who I am. But I would say if you're gonna look at it like that, be sure that the person you're sharing stuff with and you feel regret over sharing, be sure that's a, like a safe friendship to share with. And maybe even ask them, be like, oh, I feel really silly for going on and on about this thing that I'm dealing with. Like, are you okay with that? Did I, <laughs> you know, cross a line because I spent an hour going on about this thing that I'm dealing with? And if they are hopefully honest, they can be like, no, it's fine. Like, that's what I'm here for. And you can be like, great, I'm safe in that relationship. Or Hopefully they can be honest and they can be like, actually, yeah, I'm going through some stuff too, but I didn't feel like I could bring it up because you were talking about this. Sometimes we can think that we're oversharing or that we were going on about something or we can like beat ourselves up and be really harsh on ourselves and be like, why did you say that? No one cares. Why would I say it? Like, I'm so embarrassed that I shared this. But most of the time we are making that assumption in our own head <laughs> and we're making it into a bigger deal than it is. And you might then say, oh, I'm really sorry that I went on for like 20 minutes about this thing. And they'll be like, what? Oh, like to them, this person who you're so worried about oversharing with, to them it was just like part of the conversation. Like they don't care that much. They do care. But I, I have had like a different approach to like just being around other people since I heard this phrase. I think it was from Manifestel, if you've heard her channel or watched any of her videos. She talks about how people don't like you. They like the way that you make them feel. So if we are applying that to oversharing, some people might like the fact that you feel safe enough to share about everything that's going on in your life and like lay it all out and be like, oh my gosh, I'm dealing with this and this and this. Some people, that might make them feel happy because you trust them and you want to build your friendship with them. So then you're not actually oversharing. Yes, you might feel bad, but first check in with them because if they're like, no, I'm happy, like I'm here for you. I want to support you or I want to hear what's going on and I, I wanna help you, then it's not oversharing. You have to remember to check in with yourself though because if you are feeling bad, even if they say no, it's fine, then you need to work on your boundaries with yourself and do the things we talked about, like validate yourself, sit with how you're feeling first before you then go and unload all of this stuff onto someone else. It is a really tricky thing because it is subjective. And as I say, some people, you might think, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said all that, I'm so embarrassed. And then other people, like it didn't even register with them because they're just like, oh, this is just part of the conversation. She's just sharing what's going on. This is what happened. And she's talking a lot about it and she's clearly dealing with it. And I'm here, so I'm listening and I'm here for her and I'm interested. You might be making a bigger deal of it than it actually is. So that's another thing to bear in mind. But that in itself just comes back to knowing yourself validating yourself, trusting yourself. I don't ever really now question, oh my gosh, am I oversharing? I know when I am and when I'm not, and I hardly ever do it anymore because I've got clear boundaries with myself. 
I know to validate myself, process things by myself first, sit with that stuff, and then I can go tell other people. And then it's not oversharing because I'm like, well, I've dealt with this. I know how I feel about it. Or I've been through like the really intense, like annoyed phase or the irritated phase or the sad phase. Like I've been through that by myself in regards to this situation. And now I'm ready to go and tell someone else about this and share it with them. So it really is about building trust with yourself, being there for yourself and validating yourself. That's the key to stopping oversharing. I hope some of what I've said in this video has helped you. I will link my video, stop trying to get everyone to understand you because I feel like that is very much along the same lines as some of the stuff that we've talked about in this video. And if you found this video helpful, I really think you'll find that one helpful too. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.